very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Agagi. Today on the show, we'll be looking at uh, the headlines as usual, but we'll have a hot topic, which uh, is a Tiku touted to lead opposition alliance against Tinubu ahead of 2027 election. That will be a hot topic uh, this morning. We hope you will be a part of the program. So we'll, um, today, I, I woke up really, really uh, sad uh, because I saw a news item on some of these uh, um, blogs mm -hmm. where a second army officer or soldier yeah. was berating the governor of Lagos, Lagos State, State for doing what he did. Mm. Now, Lagos State governor or any other governor is the chief, chief security, security officer right. of a state. And he saw someone committing a crime. Yes, he may have used some words that we would say a governor should not use. Mm. But it doesn't It was in the give, heat of the matter. Yes, it doesn't give an army person, not even a high-ranking one. A young the, guy. Like a young very young. Uh, Lance Corporal, I think, maybe, both of them that I have seen. The, the first one came out and condemned it and said that, uh, who born you well? You're telling a governor who born you well. And then this one again this morning that I woke up to see, and I'm just I'm just sad that our society has gotten so low, so so lawless because no matter the uniform you're wearing, a governor of a state, no, no. Nah. That's not even it's even the fact aside nah. aside the fact that it was even the governor that did that. It's the fact that you're promoting lawlessness. You are yeah. supposed to be in the army. You're supposed to uphold the law because you're supposed to lead by example. And then a governor says, okay, this is a crime. We're going to arrest these people. And you come and you speak. In fact, the words that he used, I can't are even use them. Are I can't, like, I was, I was watching it. I'm like, how did we get here? How did we get to the point? First, this person is older than you in age, in ranking, in everything. And then you come and you start to speak like this. And then he talks about civilians and the word. I'm sure people would know what word they usually use when they try to talk about mm -hmm. civilians. And you're, 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 you're arresting him and saying all of this in front of these civilians. And I'm like, wow. It's, it, it's really disheartening. I know he raised some points. Yes, we agree. In fact, part of the NSAS uh, protest was, you know, the security people pay them better mm -hmm. uh, but they were the same ones that were used to stifle the answers that's yeah. a, a a story for another yeah. day anyway but he said how much do they even pay them uh, these people sacrifice themselves like if they were in the north ahead. he was even talking about if yeah. they were in the north and so yes we know that uh, the, the soldiers or, or security agencies of security people in Nigeria, they give their lives, they give yeah. everything to protect us. But that doesn't... You signed up for that. Mm -hmm. Before you became an You're army man, you signed that you can give your life for your country. So it doesn't make you or give you the right to to break the law as you want. Yeah. It's, and then, really and then you come and you speak. And, and I think the excuses he was giving was very flimsy. And he's like, oh, what if I want to go down the road to buy something? If you want to go down the road to buy something, you follow the right or, or the road. road is bad uh, or the, and all that. Yes, so if it is bad, is it bad on one lane? Why not use the other yeah, also Or did bad? they even close the lane and say, okay, everybody? Because, you know, there are times that they have to fix, you mm -hmm. know, some lanes. And they say, okay, they try to divert traffic you know, use this way instead. There are always signages. But no, you're just trying to jump the... And the road that I saw... That road wasn't was that free. bad. It wasn't bad. It was... There was no traffic, nothing. And then you're telling me that, how can I go and turn? The turning mm. is very, very far. You're I think it's expecting the... Expecting me. Like, like, are you above the road? It's the pride for me. Like, you feel like you're above. Nobody can talk to you. But, I mean... I just hope we the mentality is the mentality for me and it's I, ridiculous. I think, I think the crime, I would call it the crime, is big enough for this person to be sanctioned. If not yes, sacked. I agree. Because if they begin to do that and others, you know, look at them and say, okay, they have gotten 
uh, away with it. Mm -hmm. I can do it too. There are things that they will do that will go beyond just talking on social media. And they are wearing their uniform. Mm -hmm. It's not a so they're they not scared. In civilian clothes. They are wearing their uniform and doing what they're doing, saying the kind of things. If these people are not fished out and sanctioned, or or jailed or or removed or something because when you begin to talk about the authority like that telling them telling the authority the, a governor that you are above him because you're wearing a uniform mm. then there's a problem right there's a problem i, I was really <laughs> anyways let's go to our top trending stories this morning ipman and NPCL promise no fuel price increase one against panic buy-in Yes, the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN, and the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NMPCL, have warned Nigerians against panic buying and dismissing reports of a planned hike in the pump price of petrol, also called Premium Motor Spirit PMS. According to reports, fuel marketers clashed with the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NMPCL, over whether the government was still paying subsidy. The development triggered claims that the commodity will now cost 1,200 naira per litre due to the cessation of under-recovery of fuel costs. However, IPMAN's public relations officer, Okonlawon Olarewaju, has dismissed any suggestion of a plan by fuel marketers to increase fuel price. According to him, there has been no signal from NNPC directing fuel price at the pump to be increased. The appeal to the public to stop panic buying and labeled reports of a planned fuel price hike as just a rumor. Earlier, the NNPC all told Nigerians not to panic, assuring of no imminent increment in the price of the fuel. The NMPC all also refuted claims of a clash with Ipman, insisting that a subsidy has been entirely removed on petrol months after President Bola Tinubu pronounced the development. Tinubu had in his May 29 inauguration said the 2023 budget made no provision for fuel subsidy and that it was no longer justifiable. The declaration now saw petrol per litre jumping from 184 to over 600 naira in several parts of the country. The removal of fuel subsidy also came with the attendant economic crisis with food inflation moving to an all-time high. The implementation of subsidy removal has been a subject of controversy with the World Bank saying that the NNPC was not transparent about the financial gains from it. Oil marketers have also thre threatened to raise the price per litre of petrol over fluctuating and scarce of foreign exchange used to secure the essential commodity. Um, when I saw this, I actually panicked as well. I did not panic buy, but I panicked. And I'm like, I'm are we panicking. going to 1,200? I mean, I remember when I used to fill my car with about 10,000, 12,000, and it's full. Now I have to fill my tank with 45,000 naira. And this is at the rate of 600, right? Like six mm -hmm. something. I think I bought from... Um, so you'll be ready to one be filling it for like 100,000. 100,000. Yeah. How much? How much am I making in a month? That's it's, the question. It's a, it's a renewed, and then I have to still pay salary. Um, I have to pay salary to like my domestic workers. I have to feed. I have to pay rent. I have to save. And we're, talk, we're talking about investments yesterday. Mm -hmm. So how do I even save a chunk of that money, you know, for investments and then still buy fuel for over 100000 I was scared. You'll buy a bicycle. I'll buy a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> I just mind. I have to learn how to oh, ride what then. A, what a wonderful <laughs> time it would have been if we still had bikes in, in Lagos State. Because mm. a lot of people would have resorted to that. Yeah. To save fuel. Because there's you always don't use so much as you much, put yeah. in the tank uh, to get to your destination. Or at least we would have had this... Um, these uh, regulated uh, Okadas that mm. we used to have that were banned mm. also in, uh, in, in Lagos. But, you know, I do not understand what Ipman is saying. On the one hand, they will be saying uh, fuel subsidy has not been removed, landing costs totally. and mm. that and all that. And when it comes out to uh, the point where they're saying it, the fuel might get to 1,200 Naira, they're saying it's a lie. Mm. NNPC has not directed. Who is NNPC? NNPC is supposed to be a private company, sort of, because that's, that's the whole idea why the name changed and everything, mm -hmm. even though Kiari was still maintained as the uh, managing director or something. Uh, I, I do not understand why NPC, NNPC NPC. still has to be like the regulatory body. Mm. 
because there's a regulatory body for this uh, oil, for petrol, for whatever you're, you're talking about in the petroleum industry. It is not an NPCL. So why is it that they will still say an NPC has not said, an NPC is the one that will be making pronouncements and telling us whether the price will go up or come down and all that. I do not understand what is going on in that sector. Whatever they're telling us, I know that they are not being transparent. transparent just like what the World Bank has said, that they're not even being transparent with, you know, what they get from it and the gains that they have. Um, but please... If it does get to 1,200 1, Naira, I bet you there's going to be a lot of problems in mm. Nigeria. I, I don't want to, to use the word war or revolution or anything, Chaos. but there is only so much people Who can, can take. Get, can take. Because there is no way you are, if you are, if you are, if you are working on the island, for instance, and you live on the mainland, on the mainland there's a tendency that you might never be going home. Maybe you go home once in a month. So where do you stay? That's the question. And when, when you stay wherever you're going to stay to even work there, what would you eat? Because mm. everything will go up. Yeah. So you find out that if you're earning, let's say, 500,000 Naira, you're spending 450 Naira. Just um, eating and transportation. Alone. Uh, How do you even pay your rent? You have not paid your rents. You have not. You have not done. You if you have kids, kids, if you have kids, yes. and all that, you've not bought clothes for them. You've not bought clothes even for yourself. Take care of your family. There will be a problem because so many people will resort to other means of getting mm -hmm. whatever they need to get. Mm -hmm. Because we have a problem already that there are people. Like I, when I was coming this morning, or any time I'm coming, yeah. I find a lot of young boys, especially, just sleeping by the roadside. These people do not have a farm they will go to. These people mm. do not have anything that they're engaged in that will give them money yeah. and subsequently give them food. But so most times they're even hustling. They're trying to park your cars, you know. Those, yeah. And then sometimes they steal. So they what, steal what, your side mirrors. They will you blame them? How? Man must work, like they say. <laughs> you have to eat. So while you're calling them criminals on the one hand, and while you're calling people who will resort to criminality mm. to feed themselves, you force their hand. You're asking yourself, why did they get into that? But we already know why before even they begin. So why are we not addressing it? Even 1,000 Naira for fuel. I know they're selling it for 1,000 Naira in so many places now. Yes, yes. What? Uh, yes. No, because please. it's not everybody that has their um so the, i know black market like if you're buying yes, from yes but saying. not, not like petrol has stations access to feeding stations mm -hmm. and all that so you have to buy from black marketers and it is up to a thousand naira and we know that what that is so if it officially becomes 1200 naira or even 1000 naira you can imagine how these black marketers will be selling. And black marketers are usually in villages where there are no filling stations. Yes, yeah, so they have other to. other remote areas. Yes. Eventually, these villages are the ones that produce the food that we eat. Hmm. So 2024, tighten your belt. Everybody, you'll have to tighten your belt. Hmm. May the Lord help us. <laughs> so the federal government extends free train rides till January 7. So if you're still in the village, uh, look for a train and take the train and go anywhere you're going. The federal government has extended the free rides for commuters on all train services to Sunday, January 7, 2024. The Nigerian Railway Corporation disclosed this on its official website on Thursday. The pop-up message on the site read, Dear Passengers, we are pleased to inform you that the train services will be free of charge from December 21, 2023 to January 7, 2024, as per the directive of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The Nigerian Railway Corporation announced the commencement of free train ride on Thursday, December 21, 2023 for all its passenger services following the directive of President Tinubu. The announcement indicated that the free ride services would end on Thursday, January 4, 2024. This followed the announcement by the federal government of 50% waiver on interstate round transport and free train rides as part of moves to cushion the impact of the high cost of living in the country, especially during Yuletide. The Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Mr. Dele Alake, made the development known to State House correspondents at the Asur Rock Villa. 
So we still have today's fifth. Yeah, I was going to talk about it yesterday. That um, yesterday was the day mm -hmm. that they said the free train rides is going to end, as well as the fifty percent um, slashing price for the buses. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how many people? I think I said the last time we talked about one hundred and sixty something thousand people mm -hmm. that they said mm -hmm. allegedly benefited from this um, move to cushion the effects for everyone. That and then they were looking for they were looking buses. at five mm -hmm. million people. That included buses, the, the said buses, mm -hmm. let me use your word, alleged buses. Allegedly. That, 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 that were carrying people and then the trains and all that. I was also trying to make a calculation and see, okay, I was asking, I, w I went to Google, I was yeah. asking, how do I get from Lagos to Abuja by train? I found out that you don't have a straight train no. to Abuja, you'll have to go to Ibadan. Mm -hmm. And then there was a discussion I was having with someone who lives in Ibadan. And I was asking him, um, you live in Ibadan, why don't you take advantage of the train because it goes from Lagos to Ibadan? And he told me, if I, if I go from where I live to the train station in Lagos... In Ibadan? It will, no, no, okay, no, in, in Lagos. Lagos. Okay. Yeah, it will cost me, it will cost me almost the same transport uh, that I'm going to use to go to Ibadan from Lagos. Bus. And the same thing when I get to Ibadan, to get from the train station to where uh, I stay in Ibadan, it will also uh, cost me almost the same amount that it will take me from maybe Ojodu Bega to mm. Ibadan. So things like that make people not to take the trains. Mm. So if I want to take a train to Ibadan, I'll have to go to a Butemeta or so. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if they have a train station in Agege, but at least I know a Butemeta. You go to a Butemeta and take the train, then you go to Ibadan, stop somewhere in the bush or somewhere clo mm -hmm. uh, not close at all to the city center, mm -hmm. and then you have to take a ride from there or something that will cost you the same amount or, or, or just a little uh, less than this mm. amount that you're going to take uh, in a car. So in your mind, you're like, what am I even saying? So what, what's, what's the point? So yeah. there will be no traffic going to train stations as much as they should have been if mobility from train station to and fro train station where uh, uh, is the same way that it is right now so if you are giving us trains give us trains from destination one to two and yeah. let every state there should be have, a route yes, to it let every state have some kind of you know and then you have train. this stop and the next stop i mean that's that's how um it I is in like real real i can take a train to abuja real networks like real networks abroad that's how it is you have this stop you have coventry you have birmingham you have wolverhampton like you just keep going like that and so that way it's easier for you you just know oh i'm i'm gonna alight here and then this is close to my, my and then destination. Once, once you stop, you know that uh, there's something that will take you from there. Yes, you know, yes. Uh, so train stations don't have to be like airports, where you mm. go to the airport and it has to be designated cars that will carry you a distance of two kilometers. They are charging you 5,000 or, <laughs> or 10,000 to carry mm. one drop. And all mm. that. So things should be done about this. And yeah. we will take advantage. But if they had put train services um, in order or the, the railway system in order as they have been talking about and connected every state, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have been talking about the kind of transport fare we're talking about right true, now. True, true. Because that would even be easier, that would be more affordable yes. for people and then it's an easier route as well. And trains, you know, even take more people than vehicles do because, you know, you have like different cabins of maybe about seven, eight, so you can carry as much people as possible in one train but then <laughs> We're in Nigeria, and we just hope that things start to get better. <laughs> <laughs> but circling back um, to the whole 50% slash in price, the free train rides, um, I'm curious to know what the numbers will be at the end of the day. Um, I know they had said they were hoping to reach out to 5 million people. Is it not the same numbers we are talking about? We were talking about when they were talking about school feeding, and power, mm -hmm, and all that. Mm -hmm. Now we are finding out that those numbers do not even hold water. Mm -hmm. They are arresting people who were in charge and all that. Yeah. Meanwhile, that time that they said they were doing the scheme, there were receipts for all of these people that so are paid. So how do people manufacture this, all of this? And then they still found out that that money that were receipted for, the monies that were receipted for, uh, were transferred into some other accounts and all that. So who did they give? Where did they get the receipts from? I just because hope that's not the same thing that's happening with this, because I've not found anyone who has benefited from 
a free train ride or the 50% slash in price. And I know that they, they, they stated about five transport companies that they were using, mm. but I don't even know anyone. I, so know, I know for the trains, they must have some people because mm. people use the trains all the yeah. time. And no, but even the, even the people you know, traveling interstate, people who have probably used some of these um, transport companies, the buses now, mm. I don't know anyone that has been able to successfully go there, get 50% off, travel, come back. I don't. So first, where's the 165,000 coming from? Number two, let's see what the numbers are at the end of the day. And number three, I hope it is not a scam. I think be like like Yango said. Million, you know. Wow, so <laughs> under two days, two, three days, there were more. Is that why they're, they're extending it for a surge? Oh. Anyways, let's go to our final top trending story. This says largest syringe manufacturer exits Nigeria. Jubilee Syringe Manufacturing, once regarded as the largest syringe manufacturing venture in Africa, has officially ceased operations in Awa in the Ona local government area of Akwaibom. The firm, which opened an operation in Nigeria's south-south region of Awa in the honor local government area of Akwaibom State, was inaugurated in 2017 by former Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo, said the decision to leave Nigeria was made following unforeseen circumstances affecting business operations. Owned by Turkish national Onu Kumral, Jubilee Syringe Manufacturing Limited was one of the several industries attracted to Akwaibom State by the Governor Udom Emmanuel administration. A memo announcing the exit was addressed to workers of the company. The company had ceased production some months ago, but officially announced that its operation came to an end on December 30, 31, 2022. Titled Temporary Redundancy, Service Not Needed Till Further Notice, the memo was signed by the company's managing director, Akin Oyediron. It said to implement temporary measures to ensure the long-term sustainability of the company. The memo read in part, we trust this message finds you in good health. With heavy hearts, we write to you today to communicate a challenging decision that Jubilee Syringe Manufacturing Company Limited has had to make due to the unforeseen circumstances affecting our business operations. The company's decision to close its factory comes after two years um, after it announced plans we're underway to export its products to Germany. It also comes less than a year after company's managing director, Oye Duro, said that the company had secured a credit facility of $1 million. Meanwhile, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria has blamed the current business environment for the continued exit of multinationals companies, including the latest departure of Jubilee Syringe Manufacturing. The Director General of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Shegun Ajayi Kadir, said companies exiting Nigeria had been stretched to a breaking point. We saw GSK um, yeah. leaving. Um, now there's the Jubilee Syringe Manufacturing. Um, you, you can't even start listing. Like, what so what are we doing about country? our business environment if people are leaving? Within the country, even manufacturers that, in, that are indigenous or indigenous They're are closing also down. Fold, folding up and all that. So, and my people have a saying that when the fox comes to attack your fowl, first of all, drive away the fox before you come and think about the dead fowl that has been killed by this fox. Mm. But most times, we concentrate on 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 oh, just the, the, the fowl, fowl and then forget about the fox that might come back again yes or might still be doing harm to other things why would you be going to every country on the globe looking for investors when the ones here are leaving who will come because i would just be like that means that place is not profitable if everyone is leaving that says something if you're at the bus stop and you find people running away from a particular place, will you be running towards that place? You will run Definitely away Definitely not. Them, even before you ask questions. So people are leaving, and this is a strange, which means this is the hell. Mm -hmm. Our doctors are going, our, our um, uh, Tech, medicines mm -hmm. or uh, pharmacies and all mm -hmm. that are leaving. Uh, so if you, you are sick now and you cannot go out for medical tourism like the people who have the means do, <laughs> then you will not be able to recover. You so, medical tourism. Yes, you used this tourism. yesterday. Yeah. Yes, there was suicide tourism. <laughs> yes. Now it's medical tourism. Yes, it is. <laughs> what, what else can I see? So they go out and they get better. Some of them live there. They have houses there and they just come uh, to Nigeria to work 
and go back to where they yeah. because that's what happens. So something... Their families are there. So we now cannot uh, access medical uh, care yeah. because we cannot buy drugs. Mm. I hear asthma drugs that used to be like for uh, even the inhaler. inhaler. Yeah, that used to be like four thousand is now like forty thousand. I don't know. That's ridiculous. So how do we survive in Nigeria? And you the president know, is going all around the world. Looking for foreign looking. investment. So, do you know, I, I was with a friend on Sunday, I think, no, New Year's Day. So, we're together from the New Year's Eve to New Year's Day. And we're just having a conversation. And she told me about the Nigerian dream. Funny. It's, I laughed so hard. But guess what? She's like, the Nigerian dream is to leave Nigeria. I'm like, how, the, how can that even be a Nigerian dream? Because I want to believe the American dream is to, you know, make America great, make wealth, you know, that's the American mm. dream. How can the Nigerian dream be to leave Nigeria? And that's what is happening with all of our young ones. Everybody is leaving. The term Jackpot is a thing. And everybody wants to move abroad searching for greener pastures. And I'm sure the government officials know this. They know that people are leaving. And that is now the new Nigerian dream. And you're doing nothing about it. Asking foreign investors to come in. Meanwhile, your business environment is not even thriving. Nobody wants to leave or do business in this type of economy. So what are you doing to ensure that people can come and stay and flourish and even, you know, spread the word to other people? Because at the end of the day, if I'm thinking of expansion, right, I'm like, oh, let me see all the other companies that have expanded. Where have they expanded to? I'm going to go there. But now you're seeing, you know, these this, this people investing in places like Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon. And then they use us and, as the market. Yes, and they use us. So they come here and they just, it's just like finding a base, you know, close to mm -hmm. the country that, you know, is yeah, for... Yeah, that, that's... State and working in yes, so that's your exactly. target market. But you're like, let me find a base close to my target market because my target market won't let me do business there successfully. So I find a base here and then I get money from this other place. But guess what? They are flourishing the economy that they are currently situated in. And Nigeria is suffering. We're, we're losing out. It's, it's, it's a really, really sad thing. For the longest time, we've been asking, what really is the Nigerian dream? On this program and, you know, everywhere I've, I've Well, I just, we've, I just I've gave you... I've been asking the question, what is the Nigerian dream? Because, like you said, American dream, they start to sell the idea to the children mm -hmm. even when they are young. You can live in America, you will have freedom in America, you can mm -hmm. flourish in America. Mm -hmm. America is the greatest country in the world yes. and all that. So it's already in your psyche. It develops patriotism, it develops um, confidence, self-confidence that so long as you're an American citizen, yeah. you are going to be somebody mm -hmm. and you're proud to be that. Yes. What is the Nigerian dream that we need to be working towards? For the longest time, we've not had. Mm -hmm. So maybe this Jaguar, it's not just a new dream, it is the only dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that <laughs> because go to the schools, go to everywhere. We need to know what direction Nigeria is taking in the next 30, 40, yeah. 100 years. So you begin to what send are we the building to the towards? So you're not building anything. So your dream is either you leave or your children leave. Mm. Okay, I hope that the Nigerian dream is something that we'll be proud of real soon. Something that will say, oh, Nigeria is flourishing. And our kids can even stay here and not move abroad. And we can grow our economy. I think that's the Nigeria that I would want. But let's go on a quick break. Um, when we return, we'll be looking at what the National Dailies are saying this morning. But first, let's take a look at the weather. See you soon.